well, I made a guy an offer on this boat and he took it. So I'm gonna take it home. This is a Compact 23. I think it was the Mark III, I think, 1991. Anyway, it needs a good bit of work. We'll see how it goes. Um, Got to do some work on it. But uh, they're good boats. I think I got it cheap enough to make it worthwhile. So this is a 1991 Compact 23 Mark III. Um, I went and looked at it a couple of months ago and just honestly thought the man was wanting too much money for it for what it was. Um, it's a nice boat, but he had customized it a little bit too much um, in, in a direction that most people would not have cared for. So uh, I didn't get it. And um, about a month later, he sent me a, um, a text or, or an email, I guess. Um, you know, he had lowered, lowered the price substantially. Um, and I thanked him, but I still didn't get it. And a bit, probably about another month went by, and uh, I saw where he was starting to part out some things from the boat, uh, like the autopilot and you know different odds and ends. And um, I met with him to to purchase the autopilot, and uh, you know made basically made him an offer on the boat then with everything that was with it, and uh, he took it. Um, so I think I got it. Uh, I don't want to say cheap enough, that's not the right word, but inexpensively, I guess, enough to to um, to make it worthwhile um, because it does need a good bit of work. Um, and whenever I say that, it's mainly, I mean, the, the, the bottom, you can see there where he, uh, um, when it was loaded at some point in time, it stressed the hole right there a little bit. It didn't actually, didn't even crack the gel coat, but it did pop the paint off. Um, but uh, I've got to uh, basically undo some of the customizing that he did and try to get it back closer to original. Uh, you know, just where the, the value is back. Uh, for example, he took off the little, uh, the little eyebrow teak strips right there. Um, rather than just rebed the screws, he took them off and filled the holes full of epoxy. So I'm gonna put those back on. Um, the Genoa tracks right up here are gone and the holes are filled in and uh, they're, they're just gone. So I'm gonna have to, I think I actually may have some here to replace them with. So I'm gonna put those back on. Um, I'm gonna take some paint stripper and get rid of the green here and get it back to the original brown gel coat and then put the new tape on it here. I may or may not keep the name Valela. Valela. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's a, basically it's a jellyfish. It's got the little sail that sticks out of the water and they get blown around by the wind. Um, the trailer's pretty nice. Uh, it's got uh, new, new disc brakes on it and um, you know good wheels and tires and bearings and all that's good. We've got a, a new spare. Um, it's got a new hydraulic brake assembly here at the front. All that's new, new lines and stuff. Uh, got a, a, a fairly new winch on it. Uh, he added this instead of the bowsprit, which is okay. Um, I'll probably put a teak insert back in it up there just to make it look a little better. He's got uh, just cheap, cheap PVC from like the hardware store in there right now. Um, some of the things he did to it are, are kind of nice, and some of the things he did to it, most people wouldn't prefer. So I've just got to go through it and get it back to where it should be. Um, one of the uh, problems with the boat, uh, I guess his rub rail was leaking and he pulled the rub rail off to reseal it, and then he couldn't get it pulled back to the proper length here. It must've been a cold day when he was working on it or something, I don't know. Um, but he's just got this, just basically just caulked in right to the right to the rub rail itself so i've got to try to pull all that off and clean that up that rub rail is pretty expensive so i'm going to do the very best i can to clean that up and reuse it uh, i'll double check the the hold the deck joint make sure it's done okay 
and then I will uh, heat up and stretch this and re, re, uh, re-bed this uh, uh, rub rail. And I do have the, the little, this one had the stainless corner pieces. Some of them had the older boats had the little brass or bronze corner pieces. This one has the stainless ones. I do have those. He did keep that. He kept most of the stuff that he took off, but some of the stuff he, for whatever reason, he didn't keep. Uh, just as an example, um, he removed the cleats that were here and then just put in these little jam cleats, you know, which is fine, but I wish he had a cut the cleats. Um, so it's just some things like that. Um, on the interior, he um, tried to put in a, a marine head and he did, he cut out part of the V-berth um, and was not successful in what he was trying to do. So now I've got a two inch hole in the hole where I'm gonna probably put a transducer in or either glass it back in. Um, and I've got to reframe the one, the port side of the V-berth where he had cut out and uh, get all that back in and put back together. Uh, one of the, the port bulkhead it's got some delamination from water leak around the chain plates. I got to fix that. Um, it's got this little eight horsepower Tahatsu, which uh, is a two cycle. He's got the high torque prop on it. Uh, probably a pretty nice motor. Uh, but you'll notice this contraption here. I'm on a wide, wide screen here. You notice this here contraption that he's got. And it's, it's actually well thought out and, and somewhat well, well, uh, engineered but it's like not, not just it's just too much it's just why um the bracket on the transom would work fine for just a eight horsepower motor so he actually had had a uh, a small chain hoist with the chain cut real short that, that mount mounted right here on a, with a plate that goes right here for lifting the motor up and down with the little chain hoist uh, which to me was slower and a lot more trouble than just putting on. And it had one of those uh, garlic or garlic uh, motor mounts on it, which which I actually have too. It's a disassembled. I got to put it back together, but I've got a couple more of those around too. But so I'm gonna take this off. Uh, one of the things he did do that was pretty cool, I guess. He put um, he put cable shifter and throttle, and he made up all the brackets and everything and made it all work. And if you'll look up. If I can get up in there, if you'll look over there to the port side there, you'll see the controls that he made, and they work great. I mean, they work fine. Um, but I'm going to take, I'm going to take all of this aluminum framework off, completely off, and patch all the holes, and just put a, a, a nice heavy-duty motor mount back on there. But he removed all of the uh, transom, the clamping bracket that's made made on the engine, that bolt, you know, from the factory. All that has been removed from the engine or from the motor um, engine, I guess. Um, all of that was removed, so I've got to disassemble all of this. You know, disassemble all of this, and then I've got to reassemble the motor with the. Uh, with the you know the, the transom transom bracket um and the um you know the throttle control and all that that was here you know the handle that was here i, I hopefully i've got all the parts he, he had a box full of parts i hope they're hope they're all there so that's what i'm fixing to get started on i'm gonna just unbolt here and just take the motor off first and get that out of the way um Get, you know, get the weight under control and then I'll take this whole bracket loose. Like I say, he did a pretty good job of the, the engineering and all that and it, and it actually does work, but um, I'm putting it back to something that's a little bit simpler and less likely to break or get out of alignment or, you know, if you hit the dock with that, you know, all of a sudden you're going to be in bad shape and not be able to use your motor at all. Um, I just, for me, per like I say, it worked for him. For me personally, it's, it's, I would prefer it to be put back on a, a regular mount and i will say this the man did a pretty good job of most of what he did uh he was fixing the boat up for the way he wanted it and i see nothing wrong with that 
uh, but he found out when he, ever, he came to sell it that you can't sell a boat that's been so customized like that. It's just hard to sell it. Um, so I'll, I'll put it back closer to factory, um, at least close enough to factory to where, you know, uh, if I decide to sell it, I can, you know, sell it and, and hopefully you know, make a dollar on it. Um, he's got LED lights inside and you know, all the running lights and everything has been switched over to LED lights, which is good. Um, he put, uh, well, I'll go through it as I work on it, but it's, it's just a lot of things that I'm going to, uh, change back. Um, all of the grab rails that were teak, he took all the teak off and, uh, put, uh, PVC and it's just the inexpensive PVC. Um, it's, uh, it's not like Starburg or anything like that. Um, and they look okay and, and you know, they're, they're functional and usable. Um, the absolute biggest issue on the boat is the mast step had, uh, rot, the core had started rotting. Um, and it was because somebody drilled through the core with a large hole. You can see, see there, I think you can see that. Um, I'm in the bright sunshine, so it's hard for me to see it. Um, but, um, when they drilled a, a large hole through the mass step area, they missed the solid fiberglass plug that the factory puts in there for that purpose. They drilled in front of it and they went through the plywood core and they didn't seal it up at all. And it rained and rained and rained and rained and over, you know, however many years it happened, it, it rotted out the core and the mass step started sinking in. And so the previous owner has started to do a repair there, but didn't finish it. Um, he told me what, he did and how he went about it. Uh, it's, it's not like I would have done it, but uh, anyway, that's what I've got to work to.